Hi, in this video, we will briefly go over centripetal acceleration. In section 4.4, your textbook covers uniform circular motion. And the key result in the section is the derivation of centripetal acceleration in terms of the speed of the uniform circular motion and the radius of curvature, r, of the circle being traversed in. Um, and you could leave it there. That, that's a formula for you to memorize. And you use it whenever you see circular motion being mentioned somewhere. But I want you to take a little bit of time now because the circular motion happens to be a place where you see acceleration unexpectedly. So this will become more important when we get to forces because many people intuitively do not expect a net force because they don't think they are seeing acceleration in a particular situation. And what I want you to emphasize was that whenever you see circular motion, there is always acceleration. And that is best illustrated by figure 4.18. So let me use this figure to briefly sketch the argument for centripetal acceleration derivation, which is also done in your textbook. But I think this is a good opportunity to highlight the usefulness of the vector description of motion. OK, this is figure 4.18. And it's to showing movement of an object from one position to another position at a later time over a duration of time. As the particle follows a circular path, the instantaneous velocity vector will always be tangent to the path. So that's why the velocity vector is drawn tangent, that is parallel, um, that's not the right word, um, tangent <laughs> to the circle at the point represented by position of the particle. Then, since as the particle goes in the circle, the direction that the tangent to the circle changes, you see that the direction of the velocity vector necessarily changes. This is called uniform circular motion because the speed is assumed to be constant. So the length of the velocity vector doesn't change, only the direction does. I've drawn a copy of the velocity vector here. And through geometry, you can figure out a few things. Um, so the tangent direction to the circle is perpendicular to the radius. And what that tells me is, since you have 90 degree angle here, this is the 90 degrees minus delta theta over 2, because this is delta theta over 2. So the angle here is delta theta over 2. And these two arrows that I've drawn are parallel to each other. That's what you get when you translate a vector so that you draw the same vector elsewhere. That means this angle here is also delta theta over 2. And the angle here is 90 degrees minus delta theta over 2 for the same reason as below and looking at this straight line here the angle here when added to the other two angles should be 180 degrees which means the only angle this can work out is delta theta over 2 and that's how they get this figure here with the delta theta between the two velocity vectors now Here's a fun thing. These two triangles are both isosceles triangles with the same angle between them, delta theta. So they are similar triangles. So you can use methods of geometry to figure out what delta V should be by relating it to delta R. And once you have an expression for delta V, then you can get the centripetal acceleration by saying that that's delta V divided by delta T. And of course, for instantaneous 
centripetal acceleration, we take the limit of delta t going to zero. And big part of this ends up being somewhere along the line saying that delta r, the magnitude of the displacement, is equal to r, radius of circle, times delta theta, which is true only when delta theta is very small, because otherwise this expression is actually giving you the arc length. So only for small angles you can say that arc length is about the same as delta r. You can read the detailed derivation in the textbook, but I want you to highlight this to show how geometric reasoning, which is the vector description of motion, is helping you analyze this situation. Finally, I want you to point out one resource to help you start developing intuition for centripetal acceleration. This is a website you've seen before, FET, and the simulation is called Motion in 2D. It's a Java simulation, so you need to have Java installed in order to be able to run this simulation. The simulation does more than just a circular motion. It has a few presets that will allow you to show what linear acceleration motion or motion with linear acceleration. and circular motion looks like. And it'll take some time to develop your intuition for centripetal acceleration because this is the acceleration that you see when nothing seems to be speeding up or slowing down. So it's uh, easy to miss it unless you are constantly remembering that whenever you see circular motion, like right now, you have acceleration. So you'll get to practice this more when we get to forces. So I'll point it out again then. Until then, bye.